it has a lot of imitators around the world and that's just because when it comes to sparkling wine well there's no place quite like champagne they've been perfecting the art of making fine bubbly for over 400 years and this is where you'll find the great names of Krug, Dom Perignon, Rodera, and many, many others. It covers 32,000 hectares of vineyards, over 19,000 individual growers spread across three major subregions, and below ground, there's over 400 kilometers of underground cellars. One of the reasons why it's so good here is because it's not easy and vines have to struggle and you have to plant the right grape varieties because you're on the cusp of viticultural possibilities. It's cold here, grapes don't ripen well and so they choose Pinot Noir for backbone, richness and structure, Chardonnay for its elegance and freshness and Pinot Meunier for its fruitiness and liveliness and as is the case with most champagnes when you blend them all together you really produce something magnificent. One of the key reasons why Champagne makes by far and away the finest sparkling wine in the world is because of these incredible chalky soils. They're, they're massive, solid. You could actually write on the blackboard with them. They're incredibly well drained. The vine roots plunge down sometimes 30, 40 feet into the subsoil. They reflect light onto the vine. You could dig tunnels and caves out of them. It's a hallmark of the Champagne terroir. There's a lot of regulation in the region to ensure the highest quality standards. For example, it's the law that you have to pick the grapes by hand. Machines simply aren't allowed. This enables the winemakers to carefully select only the very best bunches, which are then quickly rushed to the press house, and you're not allowed to transport them more than a few kilometers to ensure maximum freshness. This is a, a small little cluster of Chardonnay grapes and they are some of the most delicious I've ever tasted. Absolutely spectacular, citrusy, apple-y flavors. And it's the Chardonnay that gives, gives the freshness and the finesse elegance to the wines. And when they are bottled all by themselves, in what they call a blanc de blanc, well, they produce, at least for me, the very finest of all champagnes. Wherever you are in the world, chances are that a bottle of L'Anson is just a stone's throw away. It's one of the largest champagne houses with an annual production of several million bottles and they just celebrated their 250th anniversary at a lavish party at Versailles. For the last 35 years, the winemaking has been under the watchful eye of Jean-Paul Gondon, one of the most respected winemakers in Champagne. It is his nose that ensures the continued success of the house, and Lanson is one of the very few official suppliers to Her Majesty the Queen. Although they are really well known for their black label, I've always been super impressed with their old vintages of noble cuvee, sometimes dating back over 30 years. The underground cellars stretch for miles, and whilst they still riddle by hand, they also use mechanical riddlers called giro pallets. And the major benefit of these is that they don't go on strike like most French workers. Lanson's marketing may not be quite as swish as Clicquot's or Bolly's, but there's no doubt that Jean-Paul Gondon consistently makes excellent quality champagne. And at the end of the day, the wine is more important than a pretty label.
In 1805, Madame Clicquot became a widow at the tender age of 27. She then took over running this iconic champagne house. She was responsible for the development of the method of removing the sediment from the bottle, called remouage, which was a major technological breakthrough in the winemaking process. She was also one of the very first to develop the export markets and cultivated a huge following for her lovely wines in Russia. Today, Clico is the most fashionable of all the great houses, known for their yellow label, a color that they've actually trademarked. If there's one winery in the world that is a model for excellence in branding, it's definitely Clico. When you walk down into the cellars at Clico, it's like a massive labyrinth of underground cellars and tunnels, stocked with millions of bottles of champagne. You could very easily get lost down there. There's also incredible carvings to Bacchus, the god of wine, that have been cut out of the chalk. You'll see plaques honoring some of the cellar workers who've actually been there for an astonishing 60 years, most of it working underground. There are bottles from vintages dating back to the early 1900s in their own personal library cellar. And then as you walk up the grand staircase back above ground, you'll see the dates of the famous vintages when the luxury cuvee the very best of Clicquot, called La Grande Dame, was released. <laughs>